In this video, I'm going to show you how you can rig your character using the Rigify add-on that ships with Blender, and it's a relatively easy process. This is a continuation of the tutorial for making low poly PlayStation style characters. If you want to download this character to follow along, then check the links in the description and you can find the previous tutorials there as well. And if you like my content, then there's lots of links to similar courses, which are more detailed and methodical, especially my animation course if you want to animate your character. So let's rig our character. So we've got our basic character here. And the first thing I need to do is add my Rigify rig. Now notice that my 3D cursor is up the top here. So it's best to have it in the world center, assuming that your character is also in the world center. So I'll press Shift S, that will bring up my cursor pie menu and I can bring the cursor to world origin just here. So you can see it in the middle there. Now before adding the Rigify rig, you need to enable the add-on. You go up to edit, preferences. Under add-ons, you should be able to search for Rigify here and just tick it to enable it. Once that's ticked, you can close this down. And when you press Shift A to add or go up to the add menu up here, under armature, you should see some extra armatures. So we've got the Rigify meta rigs just here and the human one is what we want to add. There are some other ones. There's some animals as well, which are very useful. And there's some basic ones just to give you a really basic rig. But the human one up here is the one we want. So I can add that in and you should see it add in like this. So we want to resize it to our character. Now it's best to do this in edit mode, but I'll show you what happens if you do it in object mode. So I'll go to front view with one of my numpad, or you can use the Cartesian coordinates up here. I can scale it up so it roughly matches my character somewhere around about there. Now remember, I did that in object mode. That's important for later on. It's also tricky to see the bones. You can come down to the object data properties here. I'll just bring up this menu and under viewport display, we can turn on in front so we can always see our bones from whatever angle we are. Go back to front view though. And now I want to match up my rig to my character. So I'll go to edit mode. So that's edit mode up here. And it's really helpful to turn on the X symmetry before you start modifying the shape. So I'll turn that on there. And now I can start moving my bones into position. Something that's quite useful if I zoom into the arm and move my 3D cursor now to the shoulder bone up here, I can press the period key that brings up my transform pivot point menu. You can also find that in the middle here and I'll change it to 3D cursor. The default is the median point just there, but I'll change it to 3D cursor. Now, if I select these bones and press R to rotate, it will rotate around that 3D cursor, which is quite helpful. The period key on your keyboard is the shortcut for that. And you do often want to change between bounding box center or median point to the 3D cursor. So I'll go back to the median point, select my end, bones here for the hand and pull them into position. Elbow needs a little bit of adjusting there and that's great. Let's go to side view now. I'll bring the elbow back, bring the shoulder back. And again, I'll select the hand and move that into position. Now for a low poly character like this that has joint fingers, I can remove some of these fingers. You do need to be a bit careful in Rigify which bones you remove because it can cause problems when generating the full rig. I'm going to keep this middle set here. So I'll go from this hand bone here down to the bottom here by holding down control and delete bones. Same for this one and same for this one. You must make sure you get the hand bone as well, which is the one at the top, as well as all the finger bones. So I'll select these ones and move them across slightly and positioning the fingers can be quite awkward. So I'd have to go to front view, line them up, side view and line them up. What's a bit easier is if we turn snapping on and the snapping mode, if we change it to volume, that will snap to the center of the volume of any object. So if I press G to grab, move that into the end there, you can see right in the middle because it's snapped to the middle of this point in the object. So I'll just move these into position. So G to grab and oh, be careful of that. If I just left click on this and move it, it disconnects that bone. We don't want that. That's really important to keep these connected. So box select those and move those into position. I'll just move these around now. These might look like they're jumping all over the place. So this is the end finger. This is actually the hand bone, so that can come back in here. And this one is the start of the thumb just there. So that makes a little bit more sense now. And I'll move this one into here and this one up there. So there's my hand bone in position for this character. If you've got fingers, then you can actually set them up with all the finger bones. And because I've got X symmetry on, that's happening on the other side. So let's set up the legs now. We'll start with side view and just bring them back, so G them Y. So I'll turn snapping off at this point, we don't need it on anymore, G them Y, and move the ankle bone to position, the knee bone into position, move these ones forwards for the toes. This bone here needs to go right to the bottom corner just there. And in front view, I'll obviously move these across, so G the next, move those across. This bone needs to be as wide as your foot, because that's the foot roll as it's called. And then these need to move into position, 
and these ones as well. Okay, so we're almost there. We have got this big problem and big mess of the face just here though. My character hasn't got any facial animations, so I can again delete all these. So all the ones at the front, make sure you don't get the head bone here, so I'll delete those. And the ears just here, delete those. And there is an extra bone just in here. You can't see it. If I alt click on this, you can see there's face and we need to get rid of that face bone as well. Otherwise we'll get some errors when we generate the rig. I'll just select this one to this one and G then Y, move that back slightly. Oh, that's another one where it's connected. So just be careful of that. Make sure we select that as well. G then Y. Any bones that are connected like that, you need to make sure they stay connected. Otherwise, again, you'll have problems when you generate the rig. So you can see it's all looking like it's in place at the moment. Just have a good look around and I think we're there. Okay, so it's all working. It's a really good idea to save at this point. So I'm going to quickly save my work. So now I need to generate my actual rig that I'm going to use that has all the extra controllers. But before I do that, remember, if I go back to object mode and press N on my keyboard and go to item, remember I scaled my rig in object mode. So the scale isn't quite set to one. That means if I go to my object data properties, scroll down to the generate rig button. If I generate it now, you can see that the rig is slightly undersized. That's its original position. So I'll undo that and I need to apply this scale. I can press control A to set or apply the scale and you can see that change to one. Now when I scroll down and go to generate rig, it generates the rig of the right size. So if I go back to my outliner up here and I'll just scroll down to the bottom, you can see there are now two rigs. The meta rig, that's the original that I moved my bones into position and my new rig, which is the actual one with all the cool controllers. So the meta rig, I can actually hide. So I'll hide that. You can actually delete it even. And the rig here is the one that I want to use. So now I can select all my objects. If you've got a single character, you just select your character and then the rig has to be selected last. So that's the active object. That's the one we're parenting to. I can now press control P and you can find that menu up in object parent. And then there is with automatic weights just there. That's the one we want. That means the weight painting will be set up for us. And now I should be able to select my rig, go into pose mode and select one of my bones. I'll talk about what they do in a second and press R to rotate and you can see it's hooked up. But there's a slight problem that the leg is moving with the arm here. I'll right click to cancel that movement and just check some other areas. So down here and the right leg is moving a bit with the left leg here. So there's a little bit of weight painting issues that we need to tidy up. But before I do, let's just explain what the different bones are. First of all, I'll scroll down and under the viewport display, I'll turn on in front so we can see them all. There's lots of different colors of bones on your rig. The purple one is the root bones. So there's only one of those and that will move around your whole character. The orange ones are for fingers and you can actually press S to scale to scale your fingers in like this. And of course, R to rotate and even G to grab if you want to stretch your hand around. The green and the red are IK and FK. The red being IK, which stands for inverse kinematics. And you control that by the end bone of the sequence. So this is controlling the entire arm up to the shoulder there. And if I select that IK bone at the end, that's what it defaults to. I can actually switch this with that bone selected. I can switch across to FK and you can see that moving position. And now I can select the green bones and press R to rotate those. And you can see them moving around with forward kinematics and that's controlled almost in the reverse direction. So the top bone is controlling the ones below it. I'll go back to the IK though. So that's the IK and FK slider just there. Generally speaking, most people have FK for the arms and IK for the legs, but that one's for another tutorial. In the IK, you've got this bone as well, which you can press G to grab and move it around and distort it or R to rotate to, to change the elbow position. And the same is true for the legs. You can rotate that for the knee position and the end here, you can move the character around. The blue bones in here are tweak bones, they're known as. I hardly use these, but you can sometimes tweak your animation slightly just by moving those around. Down at the bottom here, we've got some more red bones, which is the foot roll. If I roll that, you can roll the ankle like so. And this is the up and down. And it's very clever because it actually keeps the toes on the ground. So it's very good for walk cycles. And then you've got the yellow bones, which is the core in the middle just here. So that's a quick brief rundown of the bones. Now we need to fix the weights. Now in order to weight paint, we need to be able to see the bones that are actually connected to the specific parts of our character. But these are actually just control bones moving those deformed bones as they're known around. What we need to do is scroll up to our bone collections here and I'll open this up so it's relatively wide 
side so we can see all our bone collections. And you'll notice these special bones down the bottom here. The deformed bones are the ones we need to use for weight painting. So I'll select that and I'll actually just for now hide the rest of them. So there's the deformed bones. And like I say, that's what we need to weight paint too. Now, in order to go to weight painting, we need to go back to object mode. You need to have your rig selected first. And if your character is one object, then you select the entire character. Or if it's several objects, you select the specific one you want to change the weights for. Then with that as the active object, you go into weight painting. Now, currently I have no bone selected. So this is blue for cold this is not attached to any bone. If I select a bone with alt left click, you can see that this head here has no attachment to that bone. But as I come a bit closer, you can see that this bone has a bit of influence on this neck here. And as I go through, you can see that this bit here is fully influenced by this bone, but the chin is influenced a little bit by this bone. And you can change your bones by alt left click. So what we need to do is remove any influence of this bone here and make sure that this bone here has all the influence of the chin. To do that, we paint. So currently the ink coming out of our brush is a weight of one. So if I start painting, it will paint a weight of one and the strength of this brush is one. Now it's important to understand that the weight is set to one. So if I change the strength here, it just means if I resize my brush with F that I'm painting and it will slowly change across to red. But if I change the weight to zero, it will slowly start painting towards zero. So the strength is different to the weight. And the easiest way is to have your weight set to one and paint the weight in with let's say a strength of something like 0.7 let's say and you can slowly paint these things in if you want to gradually change it. Now I'm going to undo the changes there because there's this slight nuance about Blender. I mentioned that this bone here, alt left clicking on that bone, we'll select it, has some influence on the chin and so does this bone. But painting the red in this area will not remove the influence of this bone. In order to remove it we need to go across to tool, options and auto normalize. Normalize means it's got a maximum of one, that means when I start painting here, it will remove any other influence of any other bones. So I can paint in here until it goes red. And now when I press alt left click on this, you can see that it's cold for this bone. There's a little bit of influence up there. So I'll just alt left click on this one and paint. Now I did neglect to say that you can turn on the X axis symmetry. So you only need to paint on one side, but my object is mirrored. So there was no need for me to do that. I'll just paint this all in. So we've now got the head just being influenced by this bone. So if I go back to object mode, choose my armature and let's bring up the face bones just there. Oh, actually they're torso bones, aren't they? I deleted the face. You'll see the torso bones there. And it's actually the head bone here is actually part of the torso. And if I rotate this now, you can see the chin is no longer attached to the other parts of the neck, or in fact, the torso of this character. So you need to go through, I'll just hide the torso bone there and we don't need the face bones at all. So you need to go through your character painting the different parts to the correct bones. So let's do the torso next. So I need to go to object mode for my rig. I can press control tab to go across to object mode, choose the torso last. So that's now the active object, control tab and across to weight paint. I can now move in and alt left click on different bones and see the influence. And I think that all looks okay. I think the main problem I was having was with the legs when I was moving those, when I was moving the arm, some of the leg was moving. And when I moved the leg, some of the opposite leg was moving. So let's go to the leg object and change that. So I need to move to that new object. Unfortunately, there's no quick way to jump to a different object. It's fine if your character is all one object, you don't have to worry. But in my case, they're all separate objects. So I need to go back into object mode, make sure that the rig is selected first, the object I want to weight paint last, control tab across to weight paint. And you can select either of these two bones and start weight painting. So I'll have a weight of one and a strength of one now and start painting across here and painting across here. And with the auto normalize, that should get rid of any other influence from other objects. And because these are mirrored, it should have the same effect on the other side, all going well. I'll just quickly do the calf bone and then we'll check whether that's working. So back to object mode, rig first, the lower leg or the calves. Second, control tab, cross to weight paint, alt left click to select that bone and paint. And then we can go into object mode, choose the rig and into pose mode. So control tab into pose mode. We can hide the deformed bones at this point and then bring back the other bones. We don't need the face bones. And then I can select my character, G to grab, and you can see it's only influencing this leg now. And let's check the other leg is working and that's working well. Now the very last thing is, and I forgot to mention this, you can actually highlight 
one particular bone with the star. I forgot all about that functionality and you can turn the star off. So that's a much quicker way. We can see our deformed bones much quicker that way and then turn them off like so. So now you've rigged your character. You're all ready to go and start animating and posing and doing all sorts of funny things. As always, if you've got any questions, then comment below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.